Yeah, it's all a matter of how much. And they analyzed it, and they knew that they would survive. Okay, now, when the, the Challenger, the Columbia failed, the, the material that came off the uh, tank hit this. Now, you ever take plastic and bend it? It bends, you can bend plastic, but if you hit it real fast, it'll shatter. The impact strength is lousy on this stuff. And they never realized that a bird or something would hit it, you know. Okay. Are those more tiles where they use aerofoam or whatever it is? Pardon? Are the tiles made out of that aerofoam? Stuff? It's made out of cast silica sand, the white part. This is now, I don't know if you call it aerofoam, but it's made by, it was made by 3M originally. If you come up here, this is the white stuff is cast silica sand. Mm -hmm. An overlay of carbon material, black carbon, and it's glued to the shuttle aluminum wall, aluminum skin, by RTV bathroom cement, silicone cement. Oh, wow. You know what? Things work. Okay, let's go on to uh, space. You want to go on to the space suit now? Oh, wow, wow, wow. Here is um, a couple of things about this space suit. I'll show you some general shots. And... Uh, how about that? Good enough? Okay. There's some uh, rules on the spacesuit. You obviously you got to go in the shuttle. You look at just free clothes. What they do is you just cannot jump into a spacesuit. Go out and do a spacewalk. You could possibly get the bends. And the, uh, when you go to a uh, when you go from a higher pressure to a lower pressure. Remember, in the cabin you have one atmosphere of nitrogen and oxygen. When you're going out. You only have an oxygen. The spacesuit is still still about 4.2 pounds per square inch of pure oxygen. It makes the spacesuit simpler, lighter, and easier to move around. So you got to go through a pre-breathing process before you go into the shuttle spacesuit. Okay? The spacesuit is made by Hamilton across the uh, state line over here. We have some 80 subcontractors to help us build it. We have only built a total of 18 spacesuits since 19. 80s. The reason is, if you go back to the Apollo suit, I'll talk about the Apollo suit a little bit. The Apollo days, if you were an astronaut, okay, NASA would make, they would make three suits for you. You had a flight suit, a training suit, and a backup suit. There's a one-piece suit that you would fit into, and right now, after all the astronauts retired, there are so many space suits that even the Smithsonian can't uh, show them all. There are a lot. We have one up at Hamilton. We have two up there right now of the old suits on display. All I'm trying to say is those suits were basically used one time for each astronaut. Now because we have, you know, we can't afford the cost, I'll tell you the cost. But basically now the suit, one size kind of fits all. By mixing and matching diff si different size arms and legs, we can fit from a six foot two, uh, two inch male or female down to about a, maybe a, four, a five foot uh, lady male or female. So we can fit all those ranges by mixing and matching different size arms and legs. The backpack is the most expensive part of the suit. The suit weighs 300 pounds. Can you lift 300 pounds? In zero gravity, hey, it's all mass, okay? It's only a mass. Uh, it takes us roughly three years to make one suit. There is no assembly line, okay? Some 80 subcontractors and uh, basically it costs roughly, roughly about $12 million. I only have a mock-up here. This is not a kid suit by definition. And why don't we let children go to space yet? Do you know? For, I have two main reasons. Number one, you want to, you got to go to school first. Okay? Most of the astronauts, all, only the pilot and commander on the shuttle, they may have come from flight schools because they fly the shuttle. The other astronauts are mission specialists. They do things like oceanography. They can uh, do scientific stuff, so they don't have to be a pilot. But you got to go to school first. They're scientists, oceanographers, doctors. Story Musgrave. Somebody's got a book on Story Musgrave here, right there. Okay. Uh, basically, these guys and the girls, they know a lot of a lot of things. They're they're neat people. Anyway, so uh, the uh, you don't ha you can also have corrective vision to 2020 if you can fly with glasses. Furthermore, you have to wear a ponytail for the ladies. Otherwise, you have a very bad hair day. Okay? <laughs> uh, yes, we, right now we've got about 25, 30% lady astronauts, okay? Uh, okay, spacesuit. Uh, the mechanics of it. Well, we also, we also make sure 
you always go out with two astronauts. You never go out alone. You got the buddy system. Basically, to train to go in the spacesuit, probably at, at Houston they have this large tank, which is not a zero gravity tank. It is a neutral buoyancy. When you get in that tank, I haven't been down there, but basically if you're in the suit, the suit actually makes a beautiful diving suit by changing the backpack to a breathing system, a water water system. But basically, they will go in that tank roughly 30, 40 times before they go out for an active spacewalk to train. So they do a lot of training. And if you're in that tank and you're upside down on your head to simulate something, your head is pushing down 200 pounds on the top of your suit. It's not zero gravity. The reason why I'm trying to say is one of the <coughs> problems that the astronauts have, even though they may be jet pilots, okay, they can take six or seven Gs. Or how many Gs can you take? I haven't no, you haven't that. touched that one yet, Scott. All I'm trying to say is when they get in space, it is on the other side of the spectrum. It is zero gravity, okay? There is no zero gravity ch training chamber. Is there one around? You got one? Okay, so what happens is it's part of the space sickness. What one of the space sicknesses is, if I go up, if you take away gravity, what's the sensor for gravity, the, the balance? What I mean, ears and your eyes. There are two sensors. If I close my eyes and try to stand on one foot, I start to lose one sensor, right? Now, in space, also what happens is you lose, you lose the ear sensing system. Gravity goes away. Your ears don't know where you are. So if you move your head too fast, within minutes, Within seconds, you can have, you can throw up, you can have a projectile vomiting. Okay, so therefore, the first thing about that happens to about 70% of the astronauts. They don't vomit per se, but they can feel this queasy feeling, just like on a tilt world or something. But you can survive it, okay? Uh, so what they do is the first couple of flights, you don't really move your head around fast for a couple of days. Also, we do not let the astronauts go out into a spacewalk for the first two or three or four days because. After that time, you've seen the astronauts do all the gymnastics. I'm jealous. I used to do gymnastics back in the University of Wisconsin, and they worked for two days. I could work, I had to work for months to do a flip or something. So anyway, that's the astronauts, some of the physical feelings. Okay. The mechanics of it. Okay. Is Earth round? Yeah, we've got the Earth is round, right? Uh, what's the color of space? You know, black? Okay, and some ask, they say you can see stars in daytime with your naked eye. That kind of, you probably know all that stuff. But basically, two astronauts. Um, I got one astronaut here with, uh, he's got, look, he's got his face mask open. And did I show you the face mask? Yes, I did. But this here is used for ultraviolet ray protection. 24 karat gold on the inside. And on this side, you see the reflection. Also, when you... When an astronaut takes a picture of another astronaut, you can always, he's always, he or her is always in the film too because you get the perfect reflection back. That's, now, what else about the suit? The suit itself, I don't know, this is, you don't want to know this, but this is, there'll be a test later on this one. That's the plumbing inside the spacesuit. Okay, uh, it goes around and it comes out here, okay? <laughs> It's a complete life support system. We provide the oxygen. We provide this car. What do you breathe out? Okay, what else do we breathe out? There are three things we breathe out. You breathe out, well, nitrogen goes through the right. That's, you're right. You also breathe out moisture, okay? You also breathe out heat. Okay, so those three things we've got to take care of in the spacesuit. So, uh, anyway, that, uh, where, here we go. Where do we go? Uh, maybe. Also, what we do have is inside this, I'll show, the, I'll show this part here. There are 19,000 parts. This pretty well shows some of the stuff here. I don't know how that's going to work. There's all your parts. The one piece I want to re recommend here is the long underwear. Okay, there are special long underwear. It's uh, how good do you look in spandex, okay? Anyway, it's